we're here at the RACV Club in Melbourne for a very special event. What is that event? What's our topic? Future of transport in the age of e-commerce. This event is hosted by AmCham, the American Chamber of Commerce, in conjunction with Zebra and Blue Jay. We're going to hear from Zebra and Blue Jay and have a great panel discussion at the very end, so stay tuned. So I'm here with Dan Park. Now, Dan, you're presenting today. What do you hope to give to the audience today? Look, I hope to just give them um, an opportunity to think about what's coming in terms of e-commerce and, and just be open to the possibilities of, of the type of uh, technologies that are available and that are coming down the line and, and that maybe um, it's time to make changes now to prepare for the future. If I were to ask you, over the next five years, What's going to be the most transformative force impacting the economy? You might say artificial intelligence, machine learning, the Internet of Things, or perhaps with all the talk of autonomous vehicles and their impact on the job market, automation. The reality is each of those serve one underlying purpose, and that is to deliver value in the moment of need. Well, welcome to the now economy, a time where people, products and services and even experiences are delivered ever closer to the moment of need. Even though we're seeing massive growth in e-commerce, there's still a lot of work to be done here, particularly with brick and mortar companies trying to get an online presence. Now, in order to increase inventory accuracy, gaining visibility and connectivity at the enterprise edge is key. It's, it's where the worker touches the product that he makes or the person that he serves. It's where the work gets done. And this is where Zebra fits in. Zebra Technologies helps companies capture their edge. And we do this with technologies like barcode scanning, barcode label printing, cloud-connected mobile computing, RFID location tracking, locationing, and uh, data and analytics. By improving visibility at the enterprise edge, you, you can give your company the business intelligence to make smarter decisions and open up new possibilities. Brace the possibilities and ask yourself, how can my business capitalize on this trend? Because I can tell you, you're either going to contribute to this new economic dynamic or you're going to be consumed by it. Thank you. In the end, we've got to solve these basic problems that the consumers and customers and retailers face. Um, how do I give visibility of, of what I'm doing? How do I get my packages on time to a level? How do I change that? Just the basics, whether or not that's delivered by a drone is it sort of irrelevant at this point in time. All the organisations here, we, we capture lots and lots of data about where customers eat, where they, like to, where they like to work, do they work at home on Mondays and Fridays after a big weekend, all those sorts of things, but we're not utilising that data. So how can we take some of the learnings from this and move it forward? We do everything from moving, help, help the package move anything from overseas all the way through to the last mile. First, last mile, first mile, last mile and everything in between. I would argue almost everything you buy online is discretionary. We don't buy a lot of groceries. We don't. If you think about Maslow's hierarchy of needs, if you ever go back to your old study days, very little of what we buy online is actually at the lower ends of those needs. We don't buy a lot of groceries online. Fashion is the biggest thing we buy online. Um, it's sort of 35% of all transactions are fashion related. It's clothes, it's shoes, um, very much women dominated too in some scenarios. But everything you need is not really, it's a discretionary item. So there's no need from the consumer around speed. However, it is a great marketing stunt. As the gentleman pointed down the back, it was supposed to be delivered on Thursday, got delivered on Tuesday. He's probably massively um, excited about it being delivered on Tuesday. They're facing challenges and opportunities. I think the challenges they face is that they have assets that they want to le leverage. So they've got stores, they've got products in their stores, they want to be able to leverage that online. But if they don't have the, uh, you know, the vi high visibility or high accuracy, then they can't, they can't allocate it online because you're going to have um, dissatisfied customers, things they think they've got products and they haven't got products. So, 
So the, their main challenge is to um, get that visibility for their, st their stock in the store. There's a number of technologies that are going to help them do that and technology really is, is key to, to getting there. Um, passive RFID is probably going to be a big one to get, to get them to a space where they can be monitoring every store um, passively without, a, without a, a worker scanning. It's just sitting there scanning everything so you can see what's in your store um, online. This whole myth that bricks and mortar are dying, they're all going to disappear, all these stores are, cl are closing down. But from all the studies that we've seen, it's actually, we see peaks and troughs. We're, it's interesting that it relates to when school, kids go back to school and when they don't. So during holiday periods, a lot of people buy online, but then the trend sort of moves back into the space of the bricks and mortar store. If, if you've got a point of differentiation, either around product or around price or around experience, I think you can do that very well in an omni-channel experience. But if you're just a me too, I think you're going to be consumed by Amazon, you're going to be consumed by um, online because you, you're not competing on a, on a point of difference. Presentations are over, we learnt a lot. Now let's see if we can have a chat with some of the speakers. So joining me is Paul Sung from Blue Jay. Now, Paul, you spoke about customer experience. Do you think that businesses nowadays are providing that customer experience that the customers really want? Uh, it's an interesting question. I, I think uh, we, we recently did a secret shop of about 2,000 consumers across all sort of demographics, all regions. And what we found was 70% of people were happy with their buying experience. Um, but yet when we break down the figures, only 40% there got their delivery service on time and undamaged. Which says to me, as an Australian consumer, we accept a substandard level of, of delivery service. So from my perspective, I think the transportation companies, if they improve their service by 5%, they'll get ahead of the market. And I think the pressures of social media and what people want will change that. As we heard, there are a lot of changes happening in the transport industry to react to the digital world that we now live in. So thank you to all the presenters, thank you to Zebra, Blue Jay and of course AmpCham, the American Chamber of Commerce that put this event on. Yeah,